This video was made possible with support from viewers like you. If you find this video useful, consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets. <laughs>
is because you get hardware support at boot time and it loads much faster and it's loaded at a lower level in the boot order so usually it's more reliable but something about this Intel SPI driver is causing a problem and it's actually not Canonical's fault and it's not Ubuntu or any of the other Linux distributions it's what I like to call a perfect storm so in order for this to happen to you you have to have one of the affected systems you have to be installing one of the affected distributions and they have to have this problematic Intel SPI driver so all these conditions have to occur just like a perfect storm before your BIOS can be damaged this is really unfortunate it is a real bummer uh, if my Lenovo Yoga 910 had a problem and it was irreparable because according to the errata so if we go check out the actual issue on Ubuntu's website uh, they do say that if your system has been installed with 1710 and you cannot take a thumb drive and install say a different version of Linux and boot up to the thumb drive the USB drive that indicates that you have been affected and it may require professional servicing ouch that does mean essentially if you're a Lenovo user the BIOS chips don't pop off so unfortunately you're gonna have to send your uh, system in and have it serviced probably by Lenovo and have the motherboard replaced out and out this is most unfortunate now if you watch the video from quids up he describes the entire technical issue in detail and how many people are blaming canonical and the fact is it's not canonical's fault is it safe to say it's nobody's fault no not really you know it's it's again one of those deals where it's the perfect storm he thinks that the best deal is to put the onus on your hardware manufacturers so in this case Lenovo and see if they'll fix it now if my system was under warranty still or your system your Lenovo yoga I would say yes send it in I think that's reasonable that they should be able to take care of that because it is a bug essentially you would have a reasonable expectation that you can install an operating system on that particular system it's conceivable they'll say no we will not repair it because we don't guarantee that Linux will function correctly these systems are certified only for Windows and not for Linux so if you decide to do install it we're not going to cover it so you may have to raise a fuss to get your system taken care of I actually had an is issue a while back with my Lenovo Yoga 2 years back when I first got it uh, I booted the system up it worked for about an hour and then the SSD fried so I was told I would have to ship the system back to Lenovo which I was willing to do and I did do that and they were saying it would take at least three months to get it repaired and it actually ended up I believe it was in the Philippines so I raised a holy stink about it I was very angry and eventually I got somebody at Lenovo US and they said we're gonna fix this right now we're sending you a brand new system don't worry about it it'll we're gonna give you the system you don't even have to worry about the old system so two days later I had a brand new system and I really did appreciate that but I really had to work for it so unfortunately if this problem has happened to you and you're not able any longer to save your BIOS settings you know that you've been affected and you might as well give Lenovo a call hopefully you're still under warranty that's your best bet it sounds like your system will no longer be repairable by you if this system if this issue has affected you as far as blaming canonical and expecting them to pay for your system I think it's a no-go because they did everything that was proper and they don't guarantee you gotta keep this in mind it's free software they don't guarantee it so they have a kernel they customize it they loaded the Intel SPI driver because they wanted the system to work more efficiently for you and work better for you and it caused a problem and it happens to be a permanent issue which is a real bummer I do remember back in the day I love this so much um, had a motherboard 
I wrote the BIOS an update to it and unfortunately I chose the wrong version so I fried the BIOS so I called the company which was local that I got the computer from and I said I, I wrote a BIOS to it and I messed it up and they said no problem we'll give you another chip so I took the chip in and they had tons of them because they had a lot of systems for whatever reason they were basically running a business and doing like corporate systems and they just gave me another chip and I popped it into the board and I was back in business that quickly so you can't do that anymore you just have to live with whatever circumstances happen and if your system's out of warranty there's a good chance that's it you've bricked your system and there's no going forward it's horrific to think that a Linux installation causes this problem I think we all can agree that Linux at least now everybody's talking about you know 2018 being the year of Linux and the fact is um, I think this is gonna throw a monkey wrench in the works for anybody who's just thinking about starting into Linux if they catch a whiff of this they're gonna freak out and say no way I'm always gonna use Windows can something like this happen with Windows sure uh, as a matter of fact, it did happen to me. One of the updates to my Yoga 910 was actually a BIOS update, a UEFI BIOS update, and it erased my Linux boot for the BIOS, and it changed the BIOS back to UEFI. And I had some other settings in there that I had changed. So once it rebooted, it could no longer boot into Windows, and it could no longer see or boot into Linux. Now... I never created a video on that and I probably should I have a how-to document I wrote it was exhausting it took me four days to fix it but I put my think cap on and I sat down and I worked and worked and worked on it and at some point I probably should make a video on it because I have a bad feeling I'm going to have to do it again we talked in another video about Windows updates and how they are mandatorily doing updates which we've already known but there was a way to disable it in services by turning off Windows Update but now it's turning itself back on I did have a suggestion from a viewer to use the metered connection so I'm not actually going off topic here the whole point is Windows can mess up your system just as easily as a Linux distribution can so there is fallibility there you know either one can cause problems with your system it just happens that this particular Linux release more predominantly Ubuntu has caused the problem where your system will become unrepairable by you so let's have a look um, so here's the list of affected machines but up here uh, at least with Ubuntu we have a couple of different distributions that have been affected so this one I'm not familiar with it's been confirmed Linux Ubuntu has been confirmed and there's an OEM so all those 17.10 versions apparently are affected uh, OpenSUSE says new so I'm not sure Xenial has a fix released and they don't actually list Debian here. I wonder if Debian and their kernel version, they just don't have the Intel SPI driver there. So that is really interesting. So unfortunately, it's bad news for Linux. It kind of tarnishes the image a little bit, even though it's not technically the fault of the Linux kernel, nor of Canonical or any of the, any of the other distributions out there. If you did get affected, drop me a line, let me know. I'm really curious to see what your approach is to getting your system fixed. And my heart goes out to you if that's the case. I know, you know, in the case of my Yoga 910, I spent $1,400 on it. This is in a very expensive system that I rely on and use on a regular basis. It boots into both Windows for my work and into Linux for any remote editing or any other functionality that I need to do I typically am in Linux most of the time so it would be a real issue for me and I can imagine it is for anybody else who's purchased any of these systems hopefully this video was helpful to you if so consider liking and subscribing you know the drill if you really liked it share it and if you really really liked it consider giving me a dollar on patreon 
over at patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets. Hope to see you again. I know I'll see you before the new year. Thank you for watching.